your students, you are welcome for this year 2024. I'm about to talk about how to study and pass very well in YEC mathematics. Number one thing you need to know is to draw out a reading timetable for yourself. After doing that, that is step one. Bear it in mind that you have an exam you are about to face. It's not just a class exam, but external exam. Because class exam and external exam, they are not the same thing. But how good you are in the subject which you are about to face matters a lot. So after your timetable, the next thing you have to do for yourself is to do what? Go and check the most repeated questions from YEC theory. How do you do that? For instance, you are all aware that there must be a graph question every year. That is part one, circle geometry. That is the aspect I'm talking about. Write them down, jot them down. So I begin to now ask yourself, how good or perfect or excellent you are with the topics you have listed below. Take them one after the other. Ask yourself a series of questions. After asking yourself a question, you also reply yourself. So by so doing, you will be able to know if you can handle some of the questions that WIKE always bring out in their examination. For instance, another popular topic is one called the equation of a straight line. Find the equation perpendicular to this, parallel to this. You have been seeing all this question, meaning it is sure that that particular question or a question that looks like that topic will always come out in an examination. So what do you do as a student? You have to sit back. If you know you cannot handle it very well, what you need to do? Go back, starting from SS1, because most of you in SS1, you studied for that mass. That is a point where can give you a good background concerning the equation of a straight line, talking about the perpendicularity and parallelism in a given equation. Now you have seen also that at times their style in WIEC, any year they didn't ask, find the equation of a straight line, they will not talk about find the coordinates of points. What is this coordinate all about? Whenever you hear the name or the term coordinate, they are trying to let you know that it is what? X and Y. This is to say that good understanding or good background of that particular topic you have will pave a way for you. It's not just cramming because I see so most of you at times you think mathematics is all about cramming it, copy and paste. No, there must be a good background. So when you have that background, you have studied it. Don't believe yet that you have known it. There is one more thing you need to do for yourself. What is that? You have to test yourself in any topic you have studied. When you do, it flows. Go for the exercise from a particular test, make a new general mass or any other author, get question from it, solve, confirm that your solution is another. So when you are done doing this, it means at least you are above average preparing for that particular examination. But another you have to do, also check your past question and answer. All the years, I don't mean just one particular year, maybe 2022, when you saw the one they brought in 2022, you think that is all about all they can do. Also trace back 2005, 20, uh, 2006, 2010, 2012, 2016, and so on. Check the trend of that particular topic you have chosen. And another way to do well in an examination is for you as a student. You know the area of your weakness and the area of your strength. Now, check if the area of your strength is actually what they're asking for or what they're looking out for. Or is it the area of your weakness is what they're actually looking out for? If this area of your weakness, what do you do? You don't just have to give up because you must continue to try until you achieve whatever you want to achieve. But when you try and fail, 
don't fail to try again. Because if you have the mindset that this topic is difficult, is this, is that, like I hear some of you talking about bearing, uh, bearing is this, is that, and some people complain, their problem is what? How to draw the bearing. Those things are not actually a very big problem, but it's just all about you. What do you want? When you ask yourself this question, you go back to that topic, learn it from a fellow student, you also learn from your teacher, you also use textbook from different authors, back it up to what you already know. When you are done doing that, I think you are preparing yourself towards that exam. Why examination is not all about cramming and pouring or copy and paste. Good background must actually assist you in whatever you are doing. Another thing you have to know, have a target or fix or set a goal for yourself. What do I mean? What do you actually want to score? You know, some people, they desire to score A1, while some, they prefer B2. So I will now say, since I'm not too strong in mass, well, if I get CCs, that they are okay. What happens if CCs does not work again? What next? It may deserve. Meaning, next year, you are coming back for that exam. So the best way is to do what? Zero your mind. Believe you can do it. Believe you can do it. And when you do that, it means you are really ready for what you're about to study. Look at a topic called profit and loss. You know, most of us, especially the science students, we always run away from such a topic. But what's the background of this topic? You can remember understanding mathematics in primary five. You go back to such textbook. What do you do? Go through it, try to understand the basic things that you need in that particular topic. Get it. Also search for JS2. You must see profits and loss. Get a knowledge from there, then add it up to the one in your senior classes. Then you now watch the pattern why is using for their profit and loss. Of course, there must be business mass in every question. That one is certain. But what you as a student may not easily identify, is it going to be a compound interest, simple interest? Is it profit and loss? Or is it just a normal business mathematics? Commission? discounts, you don't know the particular one. So, as somebody who is serious for whatever he or she is doing in an exam, what do you need to do? Know all this topic very well. So what do I mean in the, at this point? If you want to answer any question having something to do with business mathematics, you must make up your mind to study at least to thought of that business mathematics. If possible, know all, so that you cannot beat your chest that if any question comes out from this part of the topic, you will be able to do something. The next thing is majority or most of you, phobia in mathematics is another issue. So you don't have to entertain fear. I tell people, don't fear any question. But what you need to do is to take your time, understand what is this person trying to say. It's just like a comprehension passage where a passage has been given to you. You read the passage, you are trying to understand what the writer is talking about. When you understand what the writer is talking about, you now begin to produce your own feedback. You give it back. Whatever the writer has in mind, you'll be able to say it. It means comprehension. Comprehension means simple understanding. That is the sentence in mathematics. But most of us are problem, especially when they see a word problem, such as maybe a, a question coming from variation, the length of the question will not seem so big to them. You just see they giving up. What some people want in WIAC is uh, solve the equation s squared plus 2s plus 5 equals 0. Nobody will ask you that kind of a question. I have to tell you the truth. It means you have to make up your mind for the study. You need a serious study in order to make your papers. Making A1 is very easy if you are really committed. And of course, you must be committed because you don't have any other choice than to pass. You cannot afford to fail because when you fail, you know what it means. Writing an exam twice, number one, your time, the years is also delaying. So the earlier, the better. The set assistance time saves nine. Early to bed, 
early to rise. The earlier you do it, the better for you. Like I have told you before about setting targets or goals for yourself, making use of timetable for your studies, um, getting the areas which work always bring questions from. Like some of us talking about second geometry, you will see that some people say, I prefer second geometry. What you prefer is not what Wayek is thinking about. So Wayek is thinking about how are they going to cover the syllabus. Because in OBJ, all the topics you will learn throughout your life from SS1 down to SS3, they must pick one more question each. For instance, if you take your time to open the objective question of Wayek, the first thing you are going to see there is either decimal place or significant figure. If you didn't see this, you are going to see standard form or maybe a simplification from indices. That is the target. Monitor the trend or the pattern they set their question. It will enable you to do what to do well. So after doing this, you can see as you are training yourself little by little, that is how you are growing. Another thing I have to tell you Look at the topic called AP and GP. That's arithmetic progression and geometric progression. The pattern in WIAC is, in theory, you must see either AP or you see GP. If this is the case, now trace back last year, this is 2024, trace back 2023, what part do they bring out last year? Is it AP question? If it is AP question, definitely, they must not repeat that same AP question again. But they only repeat question when they check how many students answer that particular question, how well they answered it. They will not decide if that same topic is going to come out again. But if greater number of students answer it very well, the next choice topic they are going to choose is what? GP. So invariably, this is to let you know that you must know these two topics. And of course, they are just like brothers and sisters. The only difference is that in, your, in getting your common difference in AP, it's not the same way you can get your common ratio in GP. Common ratio and common difference just almost a similar terms, but it's just, uh, the term common ratio is used in geometric progression, where each common ratio is gotten by using the second term to divide with what the first term, or you can decide to use the third term to divide by the second term, or the fourth term divide by what the third term. But if your GP is giving you a question like simultaneous equation where you have equation one, equation two, the pattern is what equation two divided by what equation one will give you what common ratio. Now, if the challenge is AP. It's just simply by addition or what? subtraction. You have to know all this trick in all this topic I am calling now. When you do, it means you are close to your success. Because knowing what somebody wants is very, very important. And that thing I have to teach you now is how to study the mind of the examiner. Examiners, they don't have time to study what you have in mind, but you are the one to read their mind, okay? Well, how, how do I mean? Like some of you, using completing square method, solve the equation 2s squared plus 3s plus 5 equals 0. Some of you, what you do, you go directly, you just divide. Where you, 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 it will be giving you s squared plus 2s plus 5 equals 0. No comment. No statement, just like when you solve second geometry. You say uh, the sum of two opposite interior angles are what? Supplementary. They want to see you because it is your book that is speaking at this point in time. You as a person, you are not there with them. So don't think they will know what you have in mind. Because some of you most of the times, I hear you say, oh, I wanted to write minus. Good. It is existing only in your mind. Because they didn't see it on your script. It is your script that will represent you before the examiners. So you have to bear this in mind. Your script is representing you before the examiners. So if you are solving any question that has steps or that have reason to state, you must state it clearly. Such as in a quadratic equation, if you're using completing square method to solve any question given to you, if the equation is not unity, that's step one. 
making this equation to be what? Unity. Meaning your book is now communicating the examiner. It's communicating the examiner. Step two, uh, coefficient of x. Step three, add this to both sides. If the question is current minus, but you say subtract this from both sides, I mean the constant term, uh, like five. If it's minus five, you say add five to both sides. If it's plus five, you say subtract five from both sides. That is it. Step four, uh, the square of whatever you have done. You can see that link. You are linking it just as somebody who is using computer trying to navigate from one point to the another, from home to the main site, from the main site back to where you come from. But if you are doing your work halfway, taking the examiner, she understand that this is what you have in mind. They don't have time for such kind of thing. So what they do is wherever they see your book, tell them that's what they will follow. Uh, some of you that are so wonderful, because they have seen that somebody wrote S equals 2. They didn't even care about how S came about. They are direct to answer S equals 2. How? There is no communication. You are breaking down the communication gap between your booklet and the examiner because you yourself, you can never be there. So learn how to present your work. And let me tell you, I'm laughing now. Most of you think it's all about final answer. No, I said no. In your theory, if you can be able to present your work, number one thing is what? Your formula first, it has a mark. The step, why you say step this, that's another mark. If you can't finish that particular question, please let me tell you, don't bother yourself, but make sure that you have solved more than half of the question. When you do, you can leave that particular question and go to another question. More importantly, let me bring something to your notice now about graph we normally plus every time in exam. There's a rule guiding graph. Most of you, you just plot because you have been given two CM to represent five units. Some people just think it's just that. You read the graph, there is something we call graph division. When you divide your graph, you now know what each whole is reading. And as you are plotting, remember, whatever you have on your table is what you are going to plot. If you mistakenly, you have seen maybe because A is more intelligent than you, you have finished solving, completing your table, you now use the table of Mr. A to now plot. When they are checking what you have plotted on your booklet is different from what you have on your table, that is failure. Whatever you have, you must plot it down. That is when they read it. So you have to take your time to study and always encourage yourself. Love yourself. That is the most important thing. Because when you don't love yourself, you cannot encourage yourself to study. Don't give up any time. Always believe you can do everything through Christ that strengthens us. That is the rule. And remember, it is the grace of God that speaks. By strength shall no man prevent, prevail. So you have to put all your trust in Lord, but you must do your own because faith without work is dead. At this point, I want to encourage you once more and tell you to remain focused whenever you are studying. Fear must no more. There is nothing called phobia, except you yourself, you created it for yourself. Otherwise, mass is just one plus one, which is equal to what? Two. It's as easy as sipping tea, easy as eating rice and peas. Very easy, very interesting. No stress in solving mass. Unlike some theoretical courses where you begin to cram, key yourself. But this one, know the rule, apply the rule, you get the solution. And the solution is always there for you. No much stress. God bless you once again for watching this video on how to prepare yourself for your forthcoming examination or any examination apart from YAC elsewhere. As you do, may grace speak upon your life.